Hi, I'm Michal Shah, the General Manager of AWS Glue and AWS Lake Formation. And today, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Simon Kern from BMW. BMW is one of our great customers and partners. And he'll be telling you about Cloud Data Hub and how they built it using the analytic services that you find on AWS. But before I get started, let me tell you a little bit about Simon. Simon got his Master's of Computer Science degree from Darmstadt University, and he's been with BMW for five years. He was one of the founding engineers in January 2019 of the Cloud Data Hub. And with that, let me pass it over to Simon. Well, thank you, Mahul, for the kind introduction. And uh, I'm starting with a short um, overview of our, our agenda today. So at first, I want to give a brief intro of the BMW Group IT. After that, we um, look at the Cloud Data Hub, our uh, central data lake for the BMW Group. And then we dive deep into the three pillars of the Cloud Data Hub. First, the data orchestration, then the data ingest and preparation. After that, the data analysis. And as a conclusion, I want to give a short outlook on our roadmap for the next year. So let's jump right in into um, the BMW Group IT. So even though we are headquartered in Munich, and we are a very diverse and international um, group of people. So we have um, 60 nationalities in over 29 countries and uh, around 700 locations connect to our network. Um, we uh, provide all the IT services for the whole BMW group with over um, 230 software products and services that we are delivering. And one of the most um, yeah, re important services is the um, connected drive backend, where over um, 14 million connected vehicles are connected to, and uh, this backend is serving over 1 billion requests per day. So you might imagine that we produce a lot of data um, with all of our backend systems, and um, yeah, this data we want um, to ingest in a data lake um, to organize and to analyze to gather value for our business. And let's uh, yeah, jump in right into the Cloud Data Hub, which is our central data lake for the BMW Group built on AWS technologies. It's a really a cloud native um, data lake that makes it easy to ingest data, has a scalable storage solution, and it opens many possibilities for use cases to use the data and get value out of it. So on the left-hand side, uh, we have our data providers. Um, where over 500 um, software and data engineers are uh, building data ingests and data preparations um, to fuel a data marketplace where the whole BMW group um, yeah, puts their data on the Cloud Data Hub and um, profits from the value in the data. On the right-hand side, we have over 5,000 business analysts and data scientists who are using the data to build their use cases, to build machine learning models, to build artificial intelligence products really across the whole BMW group and across all departments. And this really fosters um, data democratization because it's so easy um, to access all the data in the BMW group through your fingertips. So let's have a look at the features of the Cloud Data Hub. And really the single most important feature is the central data portal. Um, it's really the, the single point of contact for you if you want um, to get data from the BMW group or if you want to build a new use case, you can explore data there, um, you can um, query data there, you can manage metadata, you can manage access to your data there, and you also can deploy infrastructure into your own data provider or data consumer account. So um, you can work with the data seamlessly from that portal as a single point of entry. So how is the Cloud Data Hub um, structured internally? Let's have a look at the architecture. Basically, it consists of three pillars. So on the left-hand side, you have the data providers that are responsible for doing the data ingests. It can be either um, batch data, for example, um, from relational databases, or it can be streaming data, for example, from the connected vehicle fleet that they um, bring into the Cloud Data Hub. On the uh, right-hand side, you have the data consumers. And those are the people, the data scientists, the business analysts, that really create value out of the data. And um, yeah, they use uh, tools like SageMaker or um, Athena to explore the data and um, build use cases on top of it. All of this is really done with an AWS uh, multi-account setup. So right now we have over 500 accounts on the Cloud Data Hub platform because um, 
every data provider, every data consumer um, got their own account. And in the middle of all of that, uh, we have the um, core cloud data hub um, with um, the data portal and the API. And in our next, in my next slide, I want to focus on that component a little more. So um, we have that orchestration layer in the middle um, with the data portal, which I, I already mentioned is very important for our customers to explore the data, um, to query the data, to manage um, metadata, for example, and to deploy infrastructure. And this is uh, built on top of several APIs, where the most important API um, is the, the management of data sets. And a data set for us um, is a combination of S3 buckets and Glue databases. So you have always your um, data on S3 and your metadata in a Glue database. It uh, also um, provides um, services um, like security and central um, compliance services and a single sign-on for our users. The gray boxes in the background indicate um, all the different um, storage areas that we have. We call them hubs. And basically, it's a way for us to separate um, different markets or different legal entities um, into different hubs with their own storage accounts and their own um, compliance processes. We, however, um, have our unified front end. So every hub uses the same front end and our unified APIs to really make it seamless for our consumers um, to bring data from different hubs together. Now let's look a little bit more on how we structure data sets. Um, so basically a data set, as I said before, consists of an S3 bucket and a Glue database, and it is um, specific to a hub. So a data set always lives inside a hub. A data set has more than um, the S3 bucket and the Glue database. It has more metadata. For example, it got a friendly name, and it has a description, it has a responsible, um, there are business departments behind that um, who are responsible for the data set. So it brings a lot of um, metadata with it. And every data set is also assigned to a business object, um, which categorizes the data into um, yeah, a, a separate unit. We also have layers um, in our data lake. Um, so we name them source, prepared, and semantic. And every um, data set is part of a layer. And that layer refers to the majority of the data transformation. We see that in a second um, with an example. So for example, we have the um, t vehicle telemetry data that is part of the vehicle business object and it's part of the global hub because it is provided by the BMW um, group centrally. When we um, do the copy from the source system one to one in a source layer, um, then we have just the raw uh, data as it is in the source system. When the data provider wants to um, make one step further and cleans the data, for example, or harmonizes timestamps, so doing some small transformations, um, he can create a new data set in the prepared layer to make it easier for the downstream consumers to consume the data. And then if he wants to get one step further and even enrich the data, for example, with vehicle master data that he's joining against it, then he can create a data set in the semantic layer and have uh, an even more enriched experience for the consumers of that data set. Now let's step back um, to the complete architecture. So here we see we have multiple um, provider accounts um, per hub. So for example, we have the global IT that provides some central data sets and we have the local IT in, in US that is providing some data sets into the US hub. And on the other hand side, we have use cases on the, on the right side that are using either only global data, for example, or use cases that use um, data from different hubs um, together. So this really depends on the, the access management layer. And every um, use case is free to request access um, to data stored in other hubs. And then there is a request workflow triggered um, so that the responsibles can decide if those use cases are allowed um, to see the data. And here you see also the beauty of the different hubs because um, it is really separated into distinct AWS accounts um, by, by hubs so that there is no um, yeah, uh, uh, mixing of, of data of different legal entities, for example. And then on top of that, we have, have our unified portal and unified API over all the hubs, over all the regions, and even over AWS partitions as we support AWS China, for example, to store the data um, inside the Chinese AWS partition. So we've now seen the central components, and I'd like to focus a little bit more on the data um, ingestion. 
on the left uh, side of our picture here. So when building the data ingestion modules, uh, we had some key concepts in mind with the overarching principle that we want to empower our data providers um, to, to build the data ingestion process how they want to have it and how they um, um, can, can handle it and be responsible for it and build their own, own jobs. And this um, yeah, leads to three um, principles that we use. It's first the ease of use, for example, and we have two ways to ingest data. One way is via our central portal where we can um, deploy um, a, CDA, a CDK um, stack into my own provider account and there is no AWS knowledge um, needed. You just need basically your database credentials, the database URL and um, the, the target data set and then you're, you're good to go and everything is handled by um, CDK and via a CloudFormation stack. Then we have um, yeah, a second stage for, for more advanced users where we have really the same ingestion code just with a Terraform module um, where you can have a more advanced configuration for um, more advanced users that are um, yeah, knowing what they're doing uh, and using infrastructure as code to set everything up and they can use this Terraform module and provide their own configuration. Then um, as the next principle, um, we have the flexibility. So basically we, we put everything into single purpose modules that can be used on their own and can be reused. And um, you can also combine all those modules into bigger stacks. For example, have a whole data pipeline consisting of a source job and multiple prepared jobs. So it's really easy to combine all of these modules. And then as a last principle, we have the maintainability. So um, we have an open um, source internally at BMW. Um, so that means we have stored our source code in a central repository. Every BMW, BMW employee can see it and can also make um, pull requests if they want to add a new feature or if they want to fix a bug, they are free to do so. We have just a central team um, that, that takes over the responsibility to manage um, the, the roadmap. But um, yeah, people are free to submit pull requests. And if you want to make a bigger change that is not necessary um, for the whole company, you might use a fork. So you can just fork our repository and have your changes there separately. So now jump into the first uh, module, which is a relational database ingest. So here um, you see um, a data flow from left from our on-premise um, database to right um, to the CDH core account. And, and this uh, whole infrastructure is really set up um, when a user deploys the CDK stack via the portal and just provides um, his database credentials. And then everything is set up in his own provider account. And we're using um, Glue ETL job, which is uh, PySpark based. Here in the middle of the picture, it's running in a private VPC that is connected to our on-premise network. And then um, the Glue job is able to read the data from the on-premise uh, database. There are other services um, automatically deployed, like the Secrets Manager, where the database credentials are stored, or CloudWatch um, for logging, or the Glue trigger, for example, to schedule the job. Once the job is running, it pulls the data from the on-prem database and stores it in the central bucket that was created by the Cloud Data Hub when creating the data set. We also have um, the Glue um, data catalog in there, so it's living in the provider account, and we have a synchronization lambda in process that grabs the data from the provider account out of the Glue data catalog and puts it into the central account, so it is available um, to every consumer. You see some auxiliary services on the right side. So we have one central security account where we store um, KMS keys um, yeah, to, to have them in a separate account and to be really com compliant there um, and sh shut them down, for example, if, if needed to have a second layer of security. And we also have a PI API, as we call it. So we as a Cloud Data Hub team provide that API for our um, consumers and providers for them to encrypt um, very sensitive data and to be there also compliant with data privacy. For that module, um, as I said, you can either schedule it via the portal or you can use um, Terraform um, to have a little bit more advanced options like um, full ingests or incremental ingests. You can control the partitioning or you can even provide your custom PySpark code that gets executed when the job is running. So now we have our one-to-one -one copy on the source layer. And after that, the data provider might uh, use uh, another job to build the prepared layer. And that's what we see on the next slide. 
So here's a similar process and we can set up that prepared module via Terraform and then have it triggered when the source job is finished and it reads the data from the central bucket in the source layer, transforms it and writes it into the central bucket um, of the prepared layer data set. And uh, again, you have uh, various options to configure it. So you can um, do renaming of columns, you can do filtering, you can have a deduplication in there. Um, it's really, really versatile, but you can also again provide your custom PySpark code um, to modify how it's transforming the data. So when building all of these modules, um, we face quite some challenges and I want um, to share that with you to um, yeah, get a better um, insight um, on what's, what we're doing and, and what you can do if you face some problems. Um, basically our first problem in that multi-account setup was the S3 ownership problem. So um, when you put an S3 object from your provider account into the bucket of the central CDH core account, and then the object ownership does not match the bucket ownership because you put it from a different account. And therefore, bucket policies do not apply. And we made a workaround for that. Basically, you're using an INM role to write into the central bucket. But the problem then is that it gets really cumbersome to configure your Glue ETL job. But uh, fortunately, um, the S3 team released a change recently that is not necessary anymore to do that role switching, but you can just configure it as free um, to put the op correct object ownership there. The next um, challenge was the job, si job sizing. So you don't want too many small files um, because it slows down your queries, but you also don't want um, too many uh, data in one partition because that can um, yeah, lead to problems during the ingestion, for example, out of memory problems in Spark. And therefore, um, it is really key to have the right sizing there. Unfortunately, it's not that easy to, to have that automated. Um, what we did instead is we have a set of best practices. Um, so how many DPUs um, you, you should use for your ingest job and what worker size of glue do you, sh you should use and um, how a Spark JDBC partitioning comes there into play. And if you combine those uh, three options, and you, you almost always get to a configuration where it really works, works very well. And um, one thing that helps there is you can configure um, your, your parameters per ingest job and also um, have a different configuration um, for your full load, for example, or for daily incremental loads where you add a full load would load maybe 20 terabytes at once. And for inc incremental load, you just um, load maybe 100 megabyte at once. So this really leads to a different configuration that you need there. And last but not least, we have um, yeah, the small files problem um, that um, mostly um, happens when you're using streaming ingests. So um, when using uh, Firehose, for example, um, then individual files are put on S3, which are quite small in some cases. And therefore we build the compaction module that you see on the right side, which is also running on um, Glue. And there we're using a Python shell job and it basically crawls um, you, the Glue data catalog for tables. And when um, yeah, it sees a table that has not been compacted yet, it runs an Athena create table S statement, which gathers all the small files um, processes them and compacts them into bigger files and writes them out to a new prefix in S3. Then um, the compaction job running in Glue is uh, changing the table location from the old prefix in S3 with the um, small files to um, the new prefix in S3 with the bigger files. And this happens transparent um, to the consumers and therefore they don't and see any service interruption, but they just um, see that their query is speed up because they're using now smaller files. So um, having shown you the, the ingest uh, modules that we've built, um, it's time for a short recap. And um, basically what we did here, we built out some reusable building blocks for our um, data providers to use. And also on the same time, enabled them to, to build out their own jobs because of, the, of that uh, multi-account setup that we're using. And this leads to an um, empowerment of, of the ingest teams because they can choose the right tool for their job. It also enables us um, to scale out um, to the whole organization because every team gets their own provider account 
and they can do what, whatever they want in there and um, create their infrastructure that fits their problem. And it also, on the other hand side, reduces the blast radios because the different teams don't interfere with each other. So having that said, um, our journey be began um, last year, January. And in April, we had our first um, data set in the Cloud Data Hub. And in August, we had our first um, relational database uh, in just module version. So uh, over the course of maybe one and a half years, we really um, ingested over 150 systems with over one petabyte of data volume. And alone with the glue ingest module, so with the, the relational database ingest module that you've seen, and we uh, yeah, transferred over 100 terabyte of data. And the other part um, of the, the petabyte is really the streaming data, which is huge. So now the data is on the Cloud Data Hub, and um, the data consumers obviously want to use them now. So how do they do it? So they can use either um, the services already provided by AWS out of the box, which are quite various. So for example, you could use Athena, um, the serverless SQL solution to explore the data, or you could use uh, SageMaker um, with EMR, for example, or with the Glue development endpoint to analyze the data and build machine learning models. Or you can use QuickSight, um, the, the dashboarding solution, um, which, which gives you nice um, dashboards out of the box. But what, what we've seen um, in our uh, yeah, experience is that oftentimes the problem is not the, the quick data exploration, but it's more um, bringing the, the exploration into the production. And uh, yeah, not, not only meaning that we have a couple of data engineers then coding uh, the, down that, that um, exploration notebook into production code, but we really want to empower our users also on the business side and to build their own transformations and to make it production ready. So having that functionality for non-experts is really essential for us. And we did so um, be, uh, with uh, yeah, creating a module that um, contains um, SageMaker and the Glue development endpoint and um, bundling that with the CI CD pipeline and an integration into the BMW um, Bitbucket that we're using on prem for storing the source code. And therefore, we enabled our um, data consumers to build their data uh, products on their own. So let's have a short demo how that works. Um, and here you see in action our data portal. And we switch to the data analysis tab and create a new environment. And there we have uh, several options. We choose a Jupyter Notebook. We can configure the packages that are used. We configure um, the VPC where it is deployed and the machine size, for example. And this gets really deployed into my own account, my data consumer account, for example. Then everything is deployed via CDK and CloudFormation into my own account. And I get a direct link into the SageMaker Notebook um, to make the exploration and have there the sample notebook in there. So here you see um, just a sample with uh, sales data, and you can use the Glue development endpoint as normal with PySpark, and you can explore your data, um, for example, just getting the first 10 lines and doing some visualizations on top of them. So just use uh, SageMaker and the Glue development endpoint as normal. And here we have an example where we count um, the number of sales per country and um, use a yeah, chart to visualize it. Then, uh, yeah, we want to get that query into production and therefore we use that um, transformation um, definition where we have a read um, function defined, a transformation function defined and a write function defined in a separate file. And this file then can be used uh, during the exploration, during the development pipeline and during the production pipeline. And here you see it in action in the SageMaker notebook you just um, use the read function of your uh, uh, transformation um, uh, file and the transform function and see the data. After that, you modify the transform function um, to do the aggregation that we've seen earlier with a SQL command. And here we just do a group by um, the country and count um, the lines in that group. Then um, that function is uh, updated in your Spark context and you can rerun the cells and see then here the output um, with the first um, 200 lines that you've sampled. 
And obviously, um, you, yeah, you can't do it on the whole data set because it's just, just too huge. But if you find that, um, yeah, okay, your transformation, you just commit it and push it. And then um, you can create a pull request inside um, the BMW Bitbucket. You can review your changes and then create the pull request and have an external reviewer, for example, my colleague Patrick in that case. And then um, the development pipeline is triggered by Bitbucket. And when it's ready, it gives you an Athena link where you can inspect your transformation. For example, Patrick can now have a look at the data um, in the um, development database, so it does not um, interfere with your production job, but you can get just the output of the job as it would run in production. Then he approves it and merges it into master, and now the master pipeline is running, or the production pipeline, and it triggers the new glue job and builds um, the transformation and gives you then as a result the new Athena link to your production database that has been updated with your new transformation that we just saw earlier. And here is the result in the production pipeline. So now having a look at the architecture, how did we achieve it? Um, so it's a very, very similar picture. You again use um, the central data portal um, to deploy that whole stack in your own consumer account. It uses again a CDK stack that is then using um, CloudFormation to deploy all of those components into your own account. And it uses um, code pipeline and code build um, to, to roll out the different pipelines. And from the lower right, um, you see there is the exploration pipeline where we used um, SageMaker and the Glue Dev endpoint to explore the data and build um, the transformation code. Then um, we um, uh, committed and pushed it to our central bit bucket in the middle. And that triggered um, the pull request pipeline in the middle, the deployment pipeline, and that then built the data into the deployment bucket. And we were able to verify the transformation with Athena. And after that, when we merged it, um, we rolled it out in production on the, the top left, and it just built the Glue ETL job for production and um, yeah, put the data in the production bucket. Now, just to recap what we did there, basically we enabled um, uh, yeah, a rock-solid production pipeline for non-AWS infrastructure experts, and we've built in there some best practices and a predefined path how to put your data exploration task in your production pipeline. And this really empowers domain experts and non-infrastructure experts um, to build um, rock-solid pipelines, but on the other hand side, Infrastructure experts can also use that template um, easily because it contains your transformation code and it contains all the CDK code in that repository. So you can even modify the pipelines that have been deployed by CDK there. So um, yeah, that um, was what we achieved this year. And now I would like to give you an outlook on our roadmap, what we want to build next. And at the very top of our roadmap is really the lake formation integration. Um, because we really would like to have um, the fine-grained um, access control and also the automatic um, data catalog sharing. This is really something that, that our um, customers um, aim for because it makes our life so much easier. So this is something we want to um, build out for next year. Then we also want to enable fine-grained and data lineage of our Spark execution plans. So this is um, there so that um, data consumers and data providers can track the lineage of data on a column level. And this is especially handy when you have a very um, long transformation pipeline over multiple accounts and with uh, a lot of data sets. And then you can track down where has this column been generated. And this really helps in yeah, getting a, a grasp how, how your data um, pipelines work. And this also comes into play when talking about the next topic the automated data monitoring. And um, this includes um, who is using which data set, and also um, how often is the metadata updated, how often is the data updated, and getting data quality and health checks, for example, how many um, nulls are in there, is the ingestion process running um, at the scheduled intervals, but also data statistics and profiles. So how does the columns inside um, look like, um, 
what is the distribution, for example, and there um, AWS um, Glue Data Brew comes in handy. So this is something that we want to integrate also into the Cloud Data Hub. And last but not least, um, we want to um, yeah, build out a query acceleration layer for established BI tools and uh, yeah, to make it faster for our consumers to use um, existing BI products. Um, and there we want to build something like materialized views for Athena, which makes um, yeah, it easy for business users to, um, yeah, to have their transformations um, specified in SQL and just rebuild it on a, on a regular interval. Um, yeah, it's the same similar solution to the data analysis uh, tool stack I've shown you before. And this is what we also want to enable for plain SQL queries, for example. So having that said, um, thank you um, for having me here. And if you've got any questions, feel free to contact me. My contact details are listed here on that slide. And if you want to know more about um, how BMW is using AWS technology, for example, building um, yeah, automated driving features, you can tune in into the session of my colleague, Mark Neumann, um, who is presenting you um, the session paving the way towards automated driving. And if you like uh, this session, please um, complete the session survey to give me some feedback. Thank you.